In tonight's episode, we're thrilled to be joined by Josephine Nakakande, co-founder and executive director of EcoAgric Uganda. Josephine has been using the power of mushrooms not only as a source of nutrition, but as a medicine for communities, helping to heal economic wounds and uplift vulnerable families across Uganda. Through sustainable mushroom farming, Josephine is empowering women, creating food security, and driving economic growth in very profound ways. Join us as we explore her inspiring journey, how mushrooms are changing lives in Uganda, and the incredible impact her work is having on the communities in need. This is more than just a story about fungi. It's about using nature's gift to heal and transform entire communities. So stick around and get to know Josephine Nakakande. Yo, welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, where we explore the fascinating world of mushrooms and the people who love them. From expert cultivators to passionate foragers, we bring you deep conversations, cutting edge insights, and everything mycology. Whether you're a seasoned mycophile or just curious, we invite you to geek out with us on the wonders of fungi and join the mushroom movement. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Michael Geeky, and tonight we got a great show, man. Something a little different. Um, got a chance to sit down with Josephine Nakakande of EcoAgric Uganda. Uh, met her at the Ohio Mushroom Festival. Uh, she was hanging out with my buddy Don King, and I said, hey, you know what? It, it, let me steal her for a day. We're going to go hang out. I'm going to hang out with Josephine. So that's what we did. We had a good time. Uh, we're going to hear all about it. But first, you know, got to shout out Stealthy Spores. Uh, use promo code geeky get one of these new decks guys right here we got the 2024 summer deck available you go to stealthy sports.com pick you up one of those you know got some cool new cards got the homie mushman 9000 we got dirty south mycology rest in peace eternal hero card penis envy always a good call um check it out it's uh it's a fun game it's got a all the cool people, all the cool kids, which, man, you know, with what's going on with Facebook right now, let's immortalize this moment. Let's let, let's immortalize it. Let's remember how cool we had it on Facebook, how cool we had it on Instagram. Don't know how much longer it's going to be that way, guys. So, uh, yeah, pick up a deck. It's it, it's a fun game to play. It's a nice little relic of uh, our involvement in the mycology community online. Um and proceeds, uh, my little cut goes to uh, the Michael Mamas and their Mycelium Revolution. Um, yeah, I also want to shout out my uh, Patreon supporters. Um, Patreon is primarily uh, how I fund what I'm doing. I have been almost entirely demonetized on YouTube here. Um, you know, they still run their ads, but uh, I, I, I'm not making money on too many of these videos. So uh, it's a pretty paltry little income off YouTube. So Patreon has been saving the day. Uh, really appreciate all you guys who choose to support me there. Yeah, could just couldn't do it without you guys. Anyway, uh, you know what we're doing? We're going to do some 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 cool stuff on Patreon here coming up. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we'll we'll be talking about it some more. Also, uh, just a just a very quick check in uh, about what's going on in Facebook. They 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 got my buddy Natural State. They got him. They're 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 nipping a lot of groups in the bud. They're they're shutting down a lot of accounts. Um, it does kind of seem like maybe if if you uh, uh you know d do a little appeal process, sometimes that goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. But man, I don't know. It's uh it's looking like we're probably gonna have to find some other places to go. So, you know, a lot of people are going to Discord right now. I got a great Discord. Uh, a lot of people, quality vendors got their own Discords. Just go check Discord out if you haven't uh, haven't done that yet. Anyway, um, yeah, finally cooled down here in Northeast Ohio. Man, it, it had been like 90, in the 90s in September. It's crazy. Anyway, finally cooled down the last couple of days. Looks like we might get some mushroom hunting weather here. Uh, getting excited about that. All right, guys, I just want to take a just a quick second before we get into the interview and say 
man, we got a good in America. If, if you live in the United States of America or, or pretty much any other first world country, um, you know, we enjoy a lot of luxurious things when compared to some other places in the world. Um, there are people in the world who do not have a debit card. They do not have a grocery store to go to. They got to walk five miles to get some freaking water out of a well. Um, and my guest has been for since like 2009 has been working tirelessly to help out economically disadvantaged women, widowed women, young girls, um, as, as we're going to hear in the interview, she's really just trying to help her people out in Uganda. I, it, it was definitely a sobering uh, interview for me. It, it was a little bit of a wake-up call. Um, it's really easy to forget, right? We're especially these days. We're buried in our phones. We're so self-absorbed. Oh, you know, my yoga, my this, my my Mercedes, my what? what a, I don't got a Mercedes, I wish, but uh, you, you know what I'm getting at. Like, it's just easy to get real self-absorbed these days. And uh, this was a really refreshing um time I got to spend with her and get to know her and her husband and uh, just be reminded of the fact that there are people that could use some help. So um, I want you guys to watch this episode. I want you to think, you know, hey, if you want to give a couple bucks to help her out, I, I know I will be uh, donating some money to uh, help get women growing mushrooms in Uganda. That's what we want. She's going to come back to Ohio Mushroom Festival next year. We're gonna hear all the amazing stories about what uh what, what she was able to do with that money that we're that we're gonna send her. So anyway, guys, check it out. All right, guys. So we're here with Josephine Nakakande. Did I say that right? Correct. Right. Yes. Yes, I nailed the last name. I am so happy. All right, guys. Mike Ogeeky here. We're hanging out with Josephine. Uh I just got to hang out with her for the first time at the Ohio Mushroom Festival. It it the, the mush fest was great. Her enthusiasm was amazing. Uh, she got to tell her story, and I said, all right, come on. We, we got to bring you on the podcast. We got to talk about what you're doing over in Uganda. So without further ado, let me welcome to the show, Josephine Nakakande. Yay! I'm thrilled to bridge the pango gap between Africa and America. And Michael Geek, thank you so much for having me so that I'm able to share my mushroom journey and mushroom enthusiasm with the world, most especially America. The pango gap between Africa and America. And Michael Geek, thank you so much for having me so that I'm able to share my mushroom journey and mushroom enthusiasm with the world, most especially America. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here. We're just hanging out. Uh, uh on my side porch today we're, we're going to just ask her a couple questions get to know her um and and let you guys get to know what she's all about over in uganda so first off let me uh let me find this out can you share the story behind the founding of eco agaric in uganda yes thank you so much for the wonderful question and by the way thank you so much for having me i'm so grateful thank you so much for your time i really appreciate you it is called EcoAgric Uganda, and it is a short form for Environmental Conservation and Agriculture Enhancement Uganda, EcoAgric Uganda. This is a community member-based organization established way back in 2007 and aims at sustainably improving livelihoods of critically vulnerable and absolutely poor people, most especially in Uganda. It operates in three districts of Uganda and targets people who we consider in the middle of nowhere. These are the single mothers, the widows, most especially the women, the children, and the girls. So we sustainably support them improve their living conditions through sustainable farming practices and what we do, what we do holistically to the whole household. So how did you decide to start this? Like what, what was the inspiration? Yes, uh, this inspiration comes way back from my childhood. I'm a daughter to a teacher and a housewife. It is until when I went 
to high school that I realized that at home we were poor. Initially, we used to stay to, to stay with our parents. I grew up with all my parents. Unfortunately, they are still uh, alive. My father was a teacher and my mother was a housewife. However, my mother was so innovative that she got involved in farming as a source of income. She first practiced farming as a source of food for us at home and later on went into farming as a source of income. She grew vegetables mostly and I would like to tell you that we as children, we also participate in the growing. We fetched water during the dry season and we participated as our mother took part in each and everything. So our mother grew vegetables, tomatoes, uh, it was majorly tomatoes and cabbages that she sold for income. Now, when she sold them, she was able to buy chicken. When she bought chicken, she started selling eggs together with the vegetables, bought goats. And after that, the goats didn't do well. But later on, the goats were sold off, plus the vegetables and the eggs, and then she bought cows. Now, as she saved all that money, she would also get money to supplement our father's income. My mother stopped in senior four and started working, and that is when she got married to our father. So she didn't have any profession. So she settled down to do farming as a source of income. So when I went to high school, my parents had given me almost everything. They had paid the school fees. They had given me whatever they thought was fit for me. However, they forgot to give me two things. A pair of sandals, the sandals we used to go to have a shower, and a towel. So off I went to school. By the way, that was my very first time to leave my parents when I was going to high school. So when I reached school, I went to have a shower barefooted. I didn't have a towel. After having a shower, and by the way, they had bought me new clothes. I was very happy and excited. I had new clothes. I had two new dresses. I had a uniform. I, you know, things I didn't have. So when I went to school, I was bullied. I was teased. That was my first worst moment in life. Because at home, I'm the first girl. My father loved me so much. I'm the second born, though the first girl. So my father loved me so much. So when I went to school, the girls started bullying me, teasing me. It was not worth for me to go and have a shower. I resorted to having the shower earlier. The dormitories would be closed. I resorted to having the shower when everyone has finished. The matron would be harsh on me because I was late. So it was a hard moment. I rushed home. When I went back home, my parents didn't listen because I had never been out of home so they thought I was just being I was just being naughty maybe I didn't want the school so I reached home at night and in the morning they sent me back they didn't even listen to my problem so I started planning to run away from school I started planning running away from school because I couldn't stay without showering that is one two showering was the worst moment and everyone was pointing fingers at me people were bullying me so at that moment, uh, I decided, no, as I need to run out from school. As I tried to run out from school, some two girls came and handed over. One gave me a pair of sandals. They were pink. I remember them. And another one gave me an old towel. It was light blue. I remember. That scene is still fresh in my mind. So at that time, I got used. And I think that's why I didn't perform well to go to, to the university. But fortunately, I went and studied veterinary. And when I studied veterinary, that was the beginning of getting the money. I got the money. Yes. I treated people's animals. I treated cats. I treated dogs. I was the hot cake, the first female girl to be treating animals. I got the money. And when I got the money, I, whenever I, I would go to treat animals, it was only men who would take me to treat their animals, which really was a surprise to me because at home, the cows, the goats and everything belonged to my mom. 
So I started, whenever I would go to treat people's animals, I started thinking and telling them my story. Of course, everyone would come around to see the girl who is treating animals, which was awkward. So I started working. I started working as a freelancer veterinarian. Then I got employed by the government of Uganda. I started working. And then I felt it important to share my story, use my story, use my mother's story to share with other women. Because, yes, my mother had not been, was not formally employed, but she would get her money. And that money would really supplement our father's income. So that is when I started working with women to support them, improve their living conditions, to share with them, to support women also be like my mom. And my colleagues also have their own stories. So that is when we came together, four of us, to form what was known as Environmental Conservation and Agriculture Enhancement Uganda. It started as a result of sharing with my colleagues, what I was seeing, actually, this was formed together with my husband. I used to share with him wh what my mother had done vis-a-vis -vis what I see in the field, what other women are going through. It was totally different. So that is when I started sharing my story. I was that proud girl. I used to ride a motorcycle to go to the field. I was very proud. And... I tried to pass over the information of how my mother supported my father or supplemented my father's income or got her own income to an extent that she could even milk a cow and sell her own milk. So Ecoagric Uganda was formed as a way of the four of us, we are four, me, Josephine Nakakande, Dr. Kajura Charles, Mr. Muau Robert, Mr. Chintuhapat, and by the way, I'm the only lady there. <laughs> I'm the only lady. So we formed it because all of us were products of agriculture as a source of income. And all of us were agriculturalists. All of us have a veterinary and agriculture background. So we came out to share to the community how best we can do it. By the time Eco Agric Uganda was formed, I was a civil servant. But I decided to leave so as to be impactful. By the time I left, I had done some things. I had established some, I had some houses, I had some things. And yes, we formed Eco Agric Uganda so as to support those people, improve their living conditions from through sustainable farming practices. Yeah, the story is quite long. I've tried to compress it. I just love hearing that you took the experience that you gained from watching your mom have this empowered sort of life and how, how it augmented uh, your, your household income and, and all that and probably uh, not the norm, right? Like she was out of out of the ordinary she was a special woman and and you honored her by then finding other people to get together and say we can teach we can empower people to have that same outcome like let's let's bring people up i think that's really great and more to that my mother brought us up saying telling us we should always be appreciative so when i got the money after working as a veterinarian and I got the money, I felt it important to appreciate the other two girls that saved me from running out of school because all the time I would get money, something would come and haunt me. You would never get this money if it were not for those two girls. You would never get this money if it were not for those two girls. I really don't know why I didn't get the pictures of those girls. I could not remember them. I needed to thank them. So that is why I felt if I knew those girls, I, have, I would have taken gifts and gifts to them, but I didn't know them. As a way of appreciating those two girls, that is why I came out to support other girls who, would, who could be going through the same situation like me through the girls' scholarship scheme and through the education scheme. 
as I've told you, for me, I never realized that we were poor. The book would be cut into two. For example, you have one full book like this. Yes. And then my mother would fold it like this, cut it into two, so that this upper part is one subject and another part is another subject. Sometimes the book would not be enough when you go to upper classes. You write at the end, at the beginning, and in the middle. Having lunch was not easy. Going to look for fruits. I remember when I was in P4 at Doha Gaboy's primary school, one of our classmates was struck by electricity as he looked for mangoes in a mango tree. That is why I feel it important to support these children, to give them lunch, to give them scholastic materials. We would be sent home. You're sent home for school fees, but the school, the, there is no money at home. That is why we formed this school, San Martino Primary School, to be able to support children who could be going through the same situation. So whatever I personally I do, it has a link to my background. And man, I can tell you that I had a couple really important teachers in school that really shaped my future. And just hearing that those two girls yeah. like were more important than they could ever realize. Yeah. Yes. And um, I'm glad you never found them because <laughs> if you had, then maybe you'd have been like, great. I said, thank you to him. And <laughs> now I can move on. I'm so glad you didn't find them so that you, you, you formed, uh, what a wonderful organization. Yeah, thank you so much. And it is at this point that I would like to tell everyone who is watching and listening, you can never know how the amount of impact your help or support means to the person you've supported. And by the way, that is why sometimes I appreciate the donors. I feel I would like to appreciate them, but I can't get them. I can't see them. Sometimes I appreciate and say, okay, this is how they feel. I should leave them. How I wish those girls would know that whatever I do is as a result of their support. That's great. All right. So I got to uh, doing a little research on, uh, uh, on your organization. Um, I know in the beginning you started focusing on food security for them. Um, but then at a certain point, you started getting into other avenues, HIV prevention, vocational training. How, was that just a natural progression? How did, how did that change over time? Now, development programs or projects are tricky. You sit and think that there is a problem or there is a challenge for someone. Yes, sustainable farming or farming is the backbone of our country. Uganda. But when we went, we went to work with these households, we found that there were other challenges that were affecting these households. For example, some of the in some of the households, the women were widows. They needed to, ta to start taking a, a medication. In some of the households, the women were widows, they were sick, the children were not going to school. So they needed to go to school. Some of these, of these children were youth that would never enroll to a primary school or secondary school. And some of the children were primary school going children. So we decided to support a household holistically. And initially, HIV prevention, treatment, and control was on top in 2010. We needed to support these women, these households, the children and the women to access treatment so that they are able to work. One of the things that really struck us as we sat in our meetings was the, child, the women would never go to the farms because the children are not at school. They are not happy. When a child has not eaten, when a child is not at school, these women will not go for farming. So if you want to, them to go for farming, first solve this problem, ensure the child is in school, and ensure that the child has food. So we decided to support the household holistically. And I would like to say that time came that we had a challenge of hypertension 
and diabetes. Mm. After these women enrolled for HIV treatment, uh, they started doing farming so well, but then at one time we got a challenge of hypertension and we also went in for hypertension, prevention, treatment and control. So in our development work, things keep evolving. Initially, mushroom growing was not a big thing. But as time goes on, farming land is limited. So you have to think about the resources that are available. So we keep changing, changing, changing. In most cases, every after five years, we do a research of the households that we support. And this research informs mm. what we should be doing and how best we should focus our our activities. I'm sorry, I always take a look. No, these are great. I love it. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go on. Eco Agaric Uganda's mushroom farming project in partnership with the Mar Munning Trust has been one of your major undertakings. Could you walk us through how this project began and its overall impact on the local communities? Thank you. Yes, it was not Mamuning Trust. It was the Vibrant Village Foundation oh, and then okay. the Mamuning Trust. Oh, okay. And I would like to say that the Vi Vibrant Village Foundation is in the U.S. Okay. So here we are. Our very first grant was a trellis grant through the University of California, Davis. Mm -hmm. I will always applaud them because they saw us and picked us from nowhere. So after the University of California, Davis, we got a number of grants. And there came the Vibrant Village Foundation. I really appreciate you. So they came to support women in Wakiso district, improve their living conditions through sustainable vegetable growing and vocational training. Now, under the vegetable growing uh, activities, we had promoting urban farming and then mushroom growing. Here we are. We didn't know any mushroom growing. However, I had heard about mushroom growing while I was working with Hoima District Local Government. The first lady, Honorable Janet M. Seveni, had sent a team to the districts to train people about mushroom growing. So they came and trained us as Hoima District Local Government officers extension workers. So I attended the training, but it was very complicated. You need to wash your hands. You need to do this. You need to make sure there is sanitation. Things were complicated. I didn't pick interest. So now here I was. We were supposed to promote mushroom growing amongst the women. These were 200 women in Wakiso district. As any organization can do, we contracted someone, a consultant, to support us in mushroom growing. We didn't know anything about white oyster or oysters or anything. Then we also got a supplier to supply us with the items, as any organization can do. Now we organized. We had a heap of substrate. Now when this consultant came, the consultant said, you know what? If these women are involved in growing button mushrooms, you are going to get, they are going to get a lot of profit and a lot of income. And that is my objective or the objective of the project. My dear, the substrate was supplied, well sterilized. <coughs> Excuse me. All the women were there. We got taplins put down to a very big heap of substrate. We sterilized for about three days. My goodness. Initially, I used to think that we got only two mushrooms, but it seems those two mushrooms were not real. After learning about mushroom growing, I realized those two mushrooms did not grow. Leave alone the failure, the embarrassment in front of the farmers that embarrassment was big. I was so embarrassed that time I, I was working as the field officer. I was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. So the management sat and uh, the, 
the good thing all of us were agriculturalists and we decided no we needed to find other uh, places where they are growing mushrooms we went and learned about white oyster mushroom growing came and set up a uh, demonstration at our organization about white oyster mushroom growing and we started again bringing back the women but they were totally totally demoralized so we started growing the mushrooms and they started doing well it was really a nice story. And to, to make matters worse, there is no way you can tell a donor that something failed. So we never told the donor. We never told Vibrant Village Foundation. So fortunately, we were successful. As the program for the Vibrant Village Foundation was ending, we got another grant from Mamoning Foundation. This one is from, I think, UK. So Mamoning Foundation supported us. Uh, support mushroom growing in Wambo, in Wakiso district. And this time it was a walkover and it was helping us perfect our mushroom growing. So this was smooth. The results were very okay. The results were good and everything performed very well. Now, after that, the turning point was when the substrate got expensive. The substrate that was being used was cotton husks. Initially, cotton was everywhere. And the cotton husks that are used are got from Tanzania, not from Uganda. So cotton husks became expensive. We needed to start thinking of better ways of getting cotton husks. And this, is, this was like in 2019. Yeah, the Vibrant Village Foundation project was 2010. Then after 2010, we have the Man Morning. We had the Man Morning project. When it ended, we kept on growing with other farmers, and then from there, we started finding alternative mushroom growing substrates. It is at this moment that I would like to appreciate everyone who has ever supported mushroom growing efforts with that. Eco Agric Uganda through giving way through the donor box. There are so many people I would like to appreciate, but one person called Welcome to Mushroom Hour saw me, picked me, saw all my videos, and picked me and had a podcast. Is it a called a podcast or something? So when I told people the story, what we were doing, people kept following, and then they started supporting us grow mushrooms. Someone called Mike Tyson mushrooms. He's no longer called Mike Tyson mushrooms. He is called Michael Mentor now. From Mike Tyson mushrooms, he changed to performance fungi, from performance fungi to Michael Mentor. And I remember you also supported me. You also donated to my mushroom growing. So. We started grow, uh, finding alternative substrate. I started getting trainings from different people, from Flash Crusher, from Ted Anderson, from Christian Trunzo, Micropreneur, so many. I can't mention all, but it was social media. So I started sharing and people would advise. So I found alternative substrate. We started using coffee husks. We started using sawdust. We started using maize stalks. We started using maize cobs. We started using all materials around us. And then from there, we started, we, we were able, we had a challenge of good quality spawn. The spawn we, we had, we would procure was not good. Sometimes we would go get false mushrooms. And then I also learned how to collect spores, how to do, uh, to collect spores, to do liquid culture. And we started producing our own culture. And I would like to appreciate by the fire, Vulcan Vulcanverse, Vulcan Forged, who supported the construction of the mushroom growing house where we have our lab, where we have a fridge, where, where we keep our culture, where we do everything. 
And now we have over 60,000 women that we have supported wow. to learn to grow mushrooms. In brief, that is the story the, our, about our mushroom growing journey. 60,000. That is yes. amazing. So, yeah. okay. <clears throat> so you're bringing a not native mushroom over to Uganda. You're teaching everybody how to grow them. How, how are they receptive to, to eating them once? Like, what does that process look like? Are some people really like, oh, I don't know if I want to eat this mushroom or are they, are they on board going, yeah, let's give it a try. They would like to give it a try because mushrooms is a big thing in Uganda. We have other mushrooms besides these ones. Mm -hmm. So with the, first of all, the white oyster is beautiful. No one wouldn't want to take something that's white. So people would like to try them. They are easy to cook. To cook. They cook quickly because they do not need a lot of firewood. They, uh, they do not have cultural attachments. Um, mushrooms are culturally important in Uganda. Because there is, uh, there are clans that are there to protect the mushrooms. For example, the Butiko clan in Uganda, it's there to conserve the mushrooms. So, though it conserves a specific kind of mushrooms. Mushrooms have been medicinal and culturally important. They are used at important ceremonies, marriage ceremonies. I remember uh, it was my mother who prepared the special dish for mushrooms on my, when I was getting married culturally. Uh, they're important when people get twins, they are prepared. When they're inst installing the, they say that they call it heir, heir, the person who inherits. Oh, yeah, the heir. Yeah. The heir, mm -hmm. when they're installing the heir, they are really important in different cultural aspects. And there are those commonly known as Obtiko Obubala, that are really important. By the way, do you know grip water? Mm -mm. There is that water they give to children when they are crying so much, when they are still babies. So it, it, we also use it locally as grip water, as it helps. I've ever given it to my sons. So mushrooms have been important. Introducing the oyster mushrooms is not bad. Except that initially, when they were being introduced, there were so many things attached, making it a little bit difficult to, ad to adopt. Now that we have made mushroom growing a little simpler, people are adapting it and they are coming in for it. So since starting uh, this initiative, getting you know upwards of 6,000 women grown mushrooms, have you seen how has it impacted like food security uh like cultural impact i, I mean is, is this now is it exciting is it fun is it like everybody wants to be part of the fun and growing oyster mushrooms now the six thousand involves everyone that we have trained since inception mm -hmm. that is the sixty thousand. okay the 60,000 involves everyone. We have trained about mushroom growing since 2010. But as we stand now, we have at least 200 women that are actively growing mushrooms for food and income. Now, Though currently we have at least 200 growing, there are some others that have been growing. There are others that grow and become independent and they start growing. For example, we have promoted mushroom growing in Wakiso district, in Hoima district, and in Chivare district. So in those three districts, we have promoted mushroom growing. And currently we are promoting mushroom growing actively in Hoima and Chivale district. In Hoima district, we have a mushroom growing center that is also producing mushroom spawn that we use for mushroom growing. Now, how has it impacted food security, nutrition, and income? The mushrooms that are grown, for example, when you grow one mushroom block, 
you get one and a half kilograms of mushrooms. That could be over a period of two to three months. One mushroom block produces one and a half kilograms. Each kilogram is sold at 7,000 Uganda shillings. That could be something like two dollars. Okay? But at the end of it all, the farmer gets a profit of three dollars from one mushroom block. Now, from the three dollars, the farmer uses one dollar to, to get another mushroom block and the two dollars are profits. Now, we get one and a half kilograms. Some of it is sold to get money, which money is used to buy other foodstuffs like posho, like beans, like cassava flour to feed the home. And some of it is eaten as sauce. So in that way, it provides food. And when it is sold off to buy other products, for example, they were able to buy the fabric so that it can be sold off to support them get involved in more, get involved in more mushroom growing. We have had some people that have bought chicken. We have bought, had some people that have bought household utensils from mushroom growing. That is how mushrooms improve food security nutrition and income and the good thing is mushroom growing can be done alongside with other things all right so if somebody wants to get involved um, what are the different ways they can get involved first and foremost we are requesting for volunteers at this time i would like to request you michael geek to become part of mm -hmm. our <laughs> our virtual volunteer committee. We have a virtual volunteer committee that we have formed that will be meeting monthly to oversee activities of EcoAgric Uganda mushroom growing. And this one will also have um, quarterly monitoring, virtual monitoring where we'll be, go to the different mushroom uh, farmers to show what has been done. They are our ambassadors and will continue supporting us. And when is our first meeting? First. First of October is our first meeting and we'll always meet with every first Tuesday of the month. So you can volunteer virtually. You can volunteer through training. You can send us culture. You can send us whatever you, you can. You can come on site. Please come volunteer with us. Come on site to Eco Agric Uganda to support us, train us, learn with us, and also work with other projects that we have. There is a school, there is a vocational training center. We have permaculture. One thing I've not seen in the US is this gardening using water is, is called what? Hydroponics. It's one thing I wanted to see. I've not seen hydroponics. And I remember when I came to Indiana, I wanted to go and see a mushroom farm, but I never got a chance. And I stayed there for three months. But one of my friends, Paul Brennan, took me to, to Purdue University where I saw poultry and other things. I never saw mushrooms. So... The same thing. When I was coming, I wanted to see hydroponics because it's one thing I would like to set up as a demonstration and to train to the women. So you can come and volunteer on site. You can volunteer virtually. You can support by donating. With one dollar, you support a woman to grow mushrooms. With one dollar, you support a woman with one mushroom block. Each woman would like, of the 200 women, would like to have at least 40 mushroom blocks. Though that is $40. So please, any donation, we have a link uh, that is going to be shared, is really important to us. You can give us a big gift. 
and currently we would like to ensure that our mushroom training center is complete. It needs windows, it needs doors, it needs plastering, and later on that's when we'll think about the chairs and the tables. Please, we need a gift of at least 3,000 US dollars. Give us a gift. You'll see how you'll turn the whole mushroom training center. This is is something that we would like to benefit the whole of Africa. So we would like people to come. Yes, the mushroom growing center is set. I'm glad we got a moisturizer. I'd also like to appreciate people like Culture Shrooms, Othman, who supported us with some cotton husks, with grain when we are stuck. You can support us with anything in mushroom growing. It's really important. Today we were just at the spore, spore, spore store. St spore store. We learned a lot, and we we learned a, we were at the spore spore store. We learned a lot. We got a donation to support our moisturizing of our mushroom growing house. Epiphany gave us a big gift to support bulking. Now the women are producing mushrooms. These mushrooms are brought to Ecoagric Uganda, bulked, and then sold off. You can come and volunteer with us and support us with value addition. Uh, today, we were with the Michael Geek. I would like to appreciate you for taking us to learn about the Lion's Men, for sharing your knowledge with us. Michael Geek trained us, supported us, and is still supporting us in so many things, has given us this visibility. I can never take it for granted. And so many people that have supported us, we are establishing a platform. By the way, if you're looking for a social media project, this mushroom growing with the Kagrik Uganda is a social media project. It has been solely supported by social media. Well, here's what I know about social media is... It costs hardly anything to start utilizing it, assuming you have a smartphone or a computer, and it gives you an opportunity to get in front of a lot of people. So it's really cool to hear your story about how <clears throat> you just started using social media and the word got out and people started going, hey, I want to be a part of this. So I hope that for the people watching the show today, it, it, if you want to be a part of something beyond yourself, if you want the love of mushrooms to spread behind your basement or beyond your, your kitchen counter, you got an opportunity, you know, whatever you can do. If you, if you can reach out and, uh, you know, throw, throw a couple dollars uh, at, at the foundation here, that would be great. If you want to go to Uganda, she literally just said you guys can come to Uganda. You can be a part of this. You can help out. Um, and if you guys have the ability to do that, that would that would probably be a life-changing experience. We just hosted Derek O'Hare. Okay. Last year we were with Derek and he really supported us. That's He's awesome. one of those people that helped us collect spores. We've had so many people. Actually, I would like to appreciate everyone. Ohio Mushroom Festival, Vint Wesley, Dan King, everyone. We Last year we were for the Michael Fest. My commenter, my co geek, your wife and children, their smiles were so sweet. I would like to appreciate everyone. I can't mention everyone. Ted Anderson, Kristen Trunzo, so many, so many. Woodsong Mushrooms, so many. Everyone. Someone just bought us a SIM card and brought to us at the festival. There was Sarah North who was really struggling. Sarah Potter, our international chairperson. We have Diana Thomas. We have Ife Thomas. So many people. Diana Thomas, Ife Thomas, Madeline Bodein. So many people. I can't mention. Thank you so much for all the support. And please, please. Support us. Support more women. You could be looking for $1,000 to, to start up a, a business. One woman is looking for $50. $40 for the mushroom blocks. And then the $10 will be charges from donor box and the fiscal sponsor. 
And you can also give us a gift because we are fiscally sponsored by Angels for Angels. You could be looking for thousands of dollars, but this single woman and everyone who was raised up by a single mother. I personally, I still have my parents. It's, only, it's not only single mothers because what I went through, my parents were there and I almost failed to stay in school. Please spare at least one dollar and make a donation. Let's make this happen. We would like to make it happen by the end of the year. We just need 3,000 US dollars to complete our mushroom training center. And then we also have to get 200 women, at least 10,000 US dollars, but we have $2,000 collected from the festival. We appreciate everyone, Epiphany, bought us a refrigerator. You can buy us anything. Ted Anderson carried a whole parcel to us. Michael Geek has hosted us. You can also host us and give us visibility. We really appreciate. Please consider supporting us. Consider standing with the mushrooms. Support the mushrooms. Save the world. Support the mushrooms. Stand with those women who are in the middle of nowhere. Who totally have nothing, but they only have the mushrooms to save them. All right, guys, you heard it. We got some work to do. I, I don't think there's going to be a problem. We're, we're going to help you raise some money. I can tell you that right now. I got amazing people who watch the show. Thank and uh, we believe in sharing information and sharing uh, our knowledge and building each other up, myceliating, growing stronger together. So, yeah, that's that, that's what we're all about over here. So, so all right, you guys, you, you know, whatever you can do, if you can help out. It's Thank time. You so yeah, much. let's let's make it happen. I think I, I think it would be really cool if uh, all the podcast viewers and everybody out there watching says, "We're let's get this done." Let let let's see. You know, let's see this in the what district is it that that you have the mushroom center in Hoima? All right, Hoima. We gotta get Hoima hooked up. We're we're gonna do some hook up Hoima T-shirts. We're, we're we're gonna get it all going. Let's let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And finally. Michael Geek, thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much. Please keep following to see how Lion, Lion's Men perform. Oh, I'll yeah. be coming to the Ohio Mushroom Festival next year to report on what happened with the Lion's Men. Thank you so much for the tour. Thank you so much for welcoming us. Thank you so much for, ha for having us. Thank you so much for smiling to us. It means the world to us. Thank you so much for this host, for hosting us, for the podcast. I'll end by saying, may God bless you. All right, guys, we got work to do. Let's make it happen over in Uganda. Um, it, it was really a treat getting to hang out with Josephine. Um, her, her and her husband are amazing. They're great people. We just we just took them to some Chinese food. They got to try their first <laughs> Chinese food. Her husband's already a chopstick professional. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, these guys are really awesome. And I mean, it, until sitting down with her and really getting to know what her foundation's all about and, and, and the, the long history of it. Yeah, let's let's get involved. Let's do this. Let's help her out. I think I think it'd be a really cool thing. Thank you. All right, guys, that was Josephine Nakakande, uh, co-founder and executive director of EcoAgric Uganda. Uh, pretty cool lady, super enthusiastic, just like a lot of mushroom people, right? Mushrooms get us enthused. They, they get us excited. There's something about them. I, 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 I can't, I, I wish I knew what it was. Uh, sometimes it's the psilocybin. Sometimes it's not the psilocybin. Sometimes it's just seeing a cool mushroom. Uh, anyway, consider donating to, uh, to her cause. It's a great cause. She, I mean, how many other women in Africa are teaching people to grow mushrooms? I don't know. I don't, probably not too many. Anyway, uh, no other ones that I've had on the podcast. I can tell you that. So uh, if you guys got a buck or two, if you got more than a buck or two, like she said, if a $50 donation literally gets uh, a household up and running cultivating mushrooms. They, they, they take the mushrooms that they grow from that first round uh, they buy more mushrooms, they buy more stuff, or they buy more stuff that they need to grow mushrooms. So uh, please, 
please consider do donating uh, whatever you can. Uh, and if you don't got 50 bucks, that's fine. Donate five bucks, donate 10 bucks, whatever you can. Um, if, if all I do is teach you guys how to grow mushrooms by bringing people on the show and, and talking ad nauseum about growing mushrooms, right? And if it works out and if you're growing mushrooms and if you're, you're healing and if you're experiencing spiritual awakenings, if, if you're having reconciliations, if, if, if good things are happening from growing mushrooms, then let's, uh, let's just step up to the plate and do something good for this lady. I, I, I really, I, I would be honored to, to see this podcast turn, turn out to be enough money for her, uh, that three thousand dollar benchmark, man. If we could hit that, and and she could get uh, that center finished in Hoima District, that would be amazing. Anyway, I'm gonna step off the soapbox. All the information will be in the description. If you guys want to donate, please do. You can donate tonight. You can donate tomorrow. You can donate whenever. This is a legitimate nonprofit organization. It's recognized by uh, a, a lot of major international. Um, oversight committees and stuff like that. I did all the research, man. It's fully, fully real, legit, doing amazing things over there. Please consider supporting. All right, guys. Um, I'm, I'm done blabbing. Anyway, this was uh, really fun. I oh, cannot wait to see her next year. Cannot wait to hear about her. We, we got her figured out how to grow some lion's mane, hopefully. So next year, we're fingers crossed she's going to have some success stories about lion's mane. And, uh, yeah, until next week, go grow some mushrooms.